Anytime you're ready. You'll get jaws and foreheads and everything. Good to see you. Pray for you, brother. Thank you, thank you. Well, good to be here. It's been a journey. Um, you know, in the city, I use my GPS to get everywhere. <laughs> Nobody told me when you get down here, it just stops. And you're like, what happened? So we went down and we met the nice people at the Little Pony Cake where they sell sandwiches and Dollar General and we got acquainted with Barberville. It's a nice town. And, uh, and we asked for directions at the Pony Cake and they said it's that way. So we went that way and uh, then I said let's just go back to the beginning and I kept looking. I've been here once before and I said it's up on a little berm but I guess down here, I don't know if they know what a berm is, but it's a little hill. And they're like, well, this church I'm talking about is on a flat parking lot. I was like, that's not the one. It's a little burn on the hill. So anyway, we are here. Praise God, we're here. Amen. Glad to be here. Greetings from Faith Baptist Church North. So um, again, a, a blessing to be here. I was able to commandeer my wife. She doesn't usually get to travel with me much. And then my daughter, Anna, my baby girl. And then my grandson's back there somewhere, Caden. There he is. If he acts up, you guys can jump him. But uh, looking forward to this time. I really do uh, love the fellowship I have with Brother Keith and his wife and great family for the Lord. And our churches are very similar, not in looks, but in that too. But, uh, but uh, we're a small church and we're just plodding along. And um, I think it's important that we uh, just stay the course. And Amen. so tonight that's uh, what I'm going to be preaching about. So hey, how about that? If you will tonight, if I didn't uh, forget my outline, oh, there it is. How about that? Nehemiah chapter number 6, and I'll just jump right in here. Again, I'm not much for cameras and uh, things like that. I, my nephew was telling me about, he said, when you get there, you'll see that iPad. It will be in your face. He said, you'll see your reflection. And I've seen my reflection enough. I don't want to see it anymore. So I'm not going to look at it. So if you get a cheek or forehead or chin, you got it all. Nehemiah chapter number 6, and if you would, uh, in honor of God's word, if we could stand if you're able. I've learned not everyone's able. But um, I love the book of Nehemiah. One old preacher friend of mine, he's going to be with the Lord. He said, you're going to get fat on the book of Nehemiah. And I said, praise God. Um, what greater book to, to, to fatten up on but this book. And I believe especially um, for reason of, the, of, of, I think, the Lord's churches. Um, I do believe we're getting smaller. I think we're getting closer to what it was like in, in the days of Christ where they had house churches. We really are. We're oh, yeah. closer and closer as the target uh, gets nearer and nearer uh, where we are, not being a pessimist here. Uh, I'm being an optimist because God is still with his people. Amen? Amen. Nehemiah chapter number 6. Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at the time I had not set up the doors upon the gates, that Sanballat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. Watch out for Ono. But they thought uh, to do me mischief, and I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it? And come down to you. Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort. And I answered them after the same manner. Then Sanballat, uh, then Sanballat, uh, then sent Sanballat his servant unto me in like manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. Wherein was written, It is reported among the heathen. And Gashmu saith it, That thou and the Jews think to rebel. For which cause thou mayest be their king, according to these words. I'm sorry, for which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king, according to these words. Uh, let us pray. Father in heaven, tonight as we bow before your throne, Lord, we love you. And Lord, in all things, even in our adversities and complications, dear God, we fret. But you're not worried at all. All things are in your hand. I pray your blessings upon uh, the Faith Missionary Baptist Church tonight. Upon their pastor and his wife and I understand their heart dear God to stay the course to be faithful to love their church and uh, Lord regardless of how many in number there are uh, there's a great call and a cost and a cause here in this place I pray father your blessings be poured out here in a mighty way through the conference father and 
uh, through me tonight, not my words, but thy words. I thank you for bringing us here safely. And uh, in, in all its humor, dear God, I, I thank you, dear God, for bringing us here. And uh, Again, thank you for the people of this church and ask you to bless our home church, Faith Baptist, and, and our members and, uh, and, and give them health and strength, Father. And tonight, Lord, I pray for our nation. She is divided. She is broken and hurting, and I, I know there are many who are angry. There are many who are confused. Uh, a lot of uh, problems, but there are answers, and they're found in your word. And I pray tonight we'll find the greatest riches in Jesus Christ and in him alone. We thank you tonight, Father, especially for saving us. But, Father, for sending your son, Jesus, to die on Calvary's cross for our sins, was buried and rose again that third day. May we never, Father, may we never stop. May we never cease to preach Christ. And um, I pray for this community around you, God, that you will soften and tender hearts, that uh, you may save uh, the lost, Father, in this area. Begin to deal with their hearts. Draw them uh, to this place. Draw them to the truth. Use uh, each member here and their perspective places, whether it be work or home, retirement, uh, whatever avenue you've given them of ministry, dear God, I pray you will pour your Holy Spirit upon them. We ask these things and give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, again, this is probably one of my favorite books. And as we take a look at Nehemiah, probably one of the most dedicated servants of the Lord that there was. Um, especially in the face of opposition. And I would say if there's a word that describes the day and age we live in, as far as Christianity concerns, it is opposition. Now, we shouldn't run and, and tuck our tails or anything like that. I say it just to say it's the truth that uh, many are opposed uh, to God and His Word. But I'm glad that His Word is forever true. That's another message. But tonight, if we take a look at, at Nehemiah, may we be reminded tonight, and this is the title of the message tonight, just stay on the wall. Just stay on the wall. And I can look around and tell some of you probably have stayed on the wall. You stayed at it. You stayed at the work. Highs and lows, you stayed the course. And for that, God's going to bless you richly and does bless you richly. So don't forget that. Sometimes we, we get the Molly Grubbs thinking, oh, look, you're not more. Listen, God is he's blessing because you're here tonight. Well, as we take a look at this, we have to understand there's a cost for abandoning a great work, a great station. I uh, was talking to my son the other night, and he... Uh, is in the military somewhere, and uh, they are um, doing what the military does. And uh, as I spoke with him, I said, so are you guys uh, running security? I don't know how this is published or not, but whatever. Um, but I said, are you guys running security? And I heard a, a laughter in the background. He's like, no, Dad, we're, we're working. That's code for they're doing what they do. Um, we can't leave our post, Dad. If we stop here, they'll show up there. I'm glad we're here, and we'll do what we got to do, Dad, to make sure... They stay where they are, so you can be safe where you are. I love you, Dad. Um, but, you know, Christian, you and I should should uh, imitate that very sentiment. Dude, we can't leave our post. When fathers leave their post, we see what's happened in our nation. That's right. Fatherless homes. We, we see the streets are riddled with boys and girls who have no direction, have no father figure. They have no strength in their, in their heart. They've given up. No one loves them. The homes where mothers have, and we, it, I think it's a relatively new era where mothers have begun to abandon their posts and leave the children hurting, and they've deserted them. And we see the epidemic of drugs and those things that have, have wreaked havoc in the homes. But my friend, let me tell you, when someone leaves their post, there's so much to be lost. Tonight, as we take a look at Nehemiah, and like I said, I, he's an encourager. Um, and I purposely started this uh, in this series a couple months ago uh, because I wanted to be encouraged in the Lord. And listen, when you know, like David, you know, where did David find his encouragement? He found it in the Lord. Um, he didn't go out and read a how-to book on how to make me smile and how to win friends and influence people. No, he grabbed a hold of the truth and, and encouraged himself in the Lord. And that's tonight what we're really going to do. So tonight we want to just stay on the wall. But the first thing that we need to see... That takes place, and and let me let me before I jump into that, let me tell you what's going on here. Nehemiah, we know he's doing a great work. He's done all the hard stuff. He's organized things. He's rebuilt the walls. There's a little bit lacking: the gates and the doors. 
And if you've ever taken a, a, a journey through the book of Nehemiah, the first seven chapters are about the constru physical construction, the walls, the gates, and all those things. And then at, beyond chapter 8 and the rest, there's 13 chapters, the rest of it is about building up the man. What good is a structure if there's no man in it? That's right. And that's what Nehemiah was about. So he's building this work. He has an intent. It's not just a, some people build big homes and put them up on hills and just so you can drive by and go off. They don't live in them. They just own them. They have these fancy cars. They don't drive them. They just own them. It's just bragging rights. Nehemiah wasn't building the walls of Jerusalem. So people would drive by and go, well, they weren't driving back then, but they, they would go, wow, look at that wall. No, Nehemiah had something on his heart, and it was the people of God. Nehemiah's heart's passion was that God's people would be strengthened and encouraged and, and back to business for God, back to serving and putting things back in order. Now let me tell you something, friend. Anytime you try to take a stride in the right direction for God, the enemy's always there waiting. He wants to spring, especially if you make a new commitment. You, you get to a place, maybe God has convicted your heart, you've slacked in His Word and in His will and you begin to look at the mirror of God's word and say, I'm coming up short. Lord, I'm glad God gives us new beginnings, fresh start, second chance, third chance, thousand chance. Lord, I'm sorry. I want to start afresh. Amen. Aren't you glad we can have a fresh start? Yes. But be aware, just as soon as you make that commitment, a fresh start, get back on the road. The enemy's going to be there. And that's what's going on with Nehemiah. He's making the fresh start to rebuilding the walls. But these two characters, Sanballat and Tobiah, they're just relentless. No matter what he does, and kind of, I'm not going to get political tonight, but it kind of reminds me of what we're going through in our nation now. But they, they did something dirty. They, the Bible here says they published a letter. But, you know, watch out when people start publishing a letter. As a matter of fact, they, they, uh, they try to talk him off that wall. Let's go down to the plan of oh, no. Do a little talking down there. It's a, it's a real easy way for them to let's just compromise a little bit. You're, 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 you're a little bit over the top on this religious stuff. I mean, do you really think God's going to honor what you're really doing? Let's go down to oh, no. I like what Nehemiah says here. He says, but, but they thought to do me mischief. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messages of them saying, I am doing a great work. Friend, remind yourself daily that you're doing a great work. Amen. He said, I'm doing a great work. So, but I cannot come down. We can't come down from a great work. You cannot compromise your testimony for Christ. And we'll get to the, the cost of it what, it, what it will take place when we do. But he said, why should the work cease? Whilst I leave it and come down, I like how he says it, to you. Why should I come down? Why should I stop the work just to come to you? You're a troublemaker. New York Times. Uh, yet they sent unto me four times after this sword. Again, I said they're relentless. And I answered them after the same manner. I gave them the same answer. I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing. I'm not going to serve the Lord. Listen, your family, you maybe have known somebody who served the Lord with you for years, and they turned their back on the Lord. They may even give you some good pieces of pie of, of negativity. Go, see, that's how they are. You might, oh, yeah, those people are bad. Listen, friend, uh, they're just trying to, misery loves coming. They just want you to come down there where they're at. Right. They're not doing anything. They're not going to do anything unless they repent. And that's where Sam Ballot and Tobiah was. That's where they were, I should say. He said, I, I then sent Sam Ballot to serve unto me in like manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. Let me tell you what that letter was about. It was a smear campaign. That's what it was about, kind of like we're in the political season. I see that you have the same fall decorations as we do. You have political signs everywhere. And uh, this guy did this, and this guy, he's a thief, and this guy, you know, all the bad information is out there. That's what was going on here. Sam Ballot and Tobiah were launching a smear campaign. They said, Nehemiah? Oh, oh, he's an extortioner. He takes bribes. This guy, man, he's, he's out on the take. As a matter of fact, he's building those walls, and, and I think he even said something like this. He said that thou and, and the Jews think to rebel. You're going to rebel against the government. Yeah, that sounds kind of like about right today. For which cause thou buildest a wall? That's why you're so busy. You're going to rebel against the government. you got a plan, I understand. 
that thou mayest be their king according to these words. Oh, you don't like the current rule, so you're going to become your own king, and those people will be your subjects. And that's the smear campaign that was going on. You know what? Sometimes people can be convincing to why you should stop working for the Lord. They can be. Satan will, will wear your mind silly. He just will. That's why you need to go back to the Word. Well, I want to show us a few things tonight that happen when we don't stay on the wall. And we have to keep these things in mind. Again, verse 3, Number the first thing we see tonight is when we abandon the wall, when we don't stay on the wall, we abandon the work. We abandon the work. You know, uh, I think every church should have a name in its community. Listen, if you can't knock at every door, mail a letter to every door. That's something I've challenged myself to do. I'm trying to figure out how to get a, a track mail to every door. I can't hit every door in Covington, but I think I know a way now. I can at least mail them a track. But above all things, I want them to know I'm at work there at Covington. I want them to know. Well, if we don't stay on the wall, we abandon the work. You see, Nehemiah admitted his, his commission was to do a great work in any work that you do for the Lord. Now, I don't know uh, what you do for the Lord. Maybe maybe you're really young and you don't understand everything, but you know, my son, when he was real little, Jared, he couldn't be with us tonight. He had to work. He would help some of the elderly, elderly ladies faithfully, would help them in the door. And he just loved them. That was his ministry. And, and they would always, you know, talk about any things, and that was his ministry. And you might be really young tonight, but your ministry can be helping those folks who are around you. Maybe carrying things for dinners. Maybe tidying up. Things like that. There's always something new. Maybe you're, you're, you're on the other end of the spectrum and, and you just can't do what you used to do. But God always has a work for you to do. Amen. One lady in my church, she stands tracks. I'm like, hey, that's good. That is something, not nothing. That's something. Listen to our old song leader, Brother Baird, whom many of you may know. Um... He'll show up, and his health might even be good. One night we worked till the wee hours of the night putting in a water heater. We were two or three guys. And I said, why don't you go home and get some rest? He said, why don't you go home and get some rest? I said, I have to finish the water heater. He said, I'm going to hold this flashlight, and I'm going to finish holding this flashlight. Amen. You go home, I go home. All right, I'm not going to argue with you. You're my senior. But you know what? Just something. But friends, do something, something small, because the work must continue. Any work that you do for God is a great work. Probably one of my, well, I would call it my life verse. Probably anybody who knows me and knows me well knows my life verse. Even though I know it by heart, I always have to read it because I misquote it. Psalm 8410 says, For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Friend, just a doorkeeper in God's house is a great work. Well, what does that do? Holding a door open. Friend, because you're doing it for the right person. You're doing it for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You see, Nehemiah's commission was a great work. And as I said before, uh, Satan who, who seeks to discourage you and seeks to, to break you down, seeks to get you to turn uh, from the great work that you're doing. He wants you to stop. 1 Peter 5.8 describes their enemy, just like Sam Ballot and Tobiah, except for he's diabolically the worst. 1 Peter 5.8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He's looking to chew you up and spit you out, so you're no good for the Lord. But I have good news for you tonight. We serve a mighty king. We serve a mighty God. And he wants you to serve him in faithfulness in whatever your capacity is. And I'm learning. I don't have. I want to, I want to be a great preacher someday. <laughs> but I'm learning. I'm, I'm only me. I'm only me. I can't be some of the great theologians. I'm not going to name any because you might not like them. Because um, I like to watch Creflo Dollar and Joel Osteen. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. God wants you to do your work, but he wants you to do it clean-handed. You see, if you abandon the work, you abandon God's work. You've let the enemy overtake you. And this is God's plan. It's his work. He doesn't want us to abandon it for, for Satan's uh, devices for his foolishness. 
But secondly tonight, as we see in, in, our, in our second verse, turn back there with me in Nehemiah chapter 6 there, and the first part, in verse 3, he says, And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. You see, if we abandon, if we step down off the wall, we stop serving the Lord, not only do we abandon the work that God's given us to do, but we abandon the right way. Do you know, in fact, you are a lighthouse to your neighbors, your family, your friends, your co-workers? You're a lighthouse. You're a lighthouse. Where I currently work, I work full time outside of the church and don't really like that, but it's what I got to do for now. But I build a testimony. My son, who has recently hired on with me, he works for Duncan Service Plus, little plug in there. But uh, he works for me. And you know what I like when he comes to work and he meets people that I've worked for and already done work for? The testimony that what I do, I do for the glory of God. Now, they don't call it the glory of God. They say, your dad does good work. My son called from the military, and I'll probably say that a few more times before we get out. I love my son, Josh. miss him dearly, but I was at a house and was working. It's, I worked in a big nursing home, but I worked for myself. And the woman came out, and, and my son FaceTime. You know, when you get the video, and you can, and I'm in the middle of a job. I'm like, you know what? I stopped. Like, you can send me home. I don't care. It's my son. And I said, this is my son. He's in the Middle East, and we're going to talk. I said, you can talk to him if you want. And they talked for a few minutes, and the the uh, daughter of the lady who lived there. She said, your dad does absolutely wonderful work. And my son said, that sounds like my dad. Melt of my heart. Listen. We do what we do, whether you're at work, don't you, Brother Keith? You do x-ray stuff, don't you? Do it for the glory of God. I know what you're, I know what you're like at work. I have never been to you at work. Maybe we have a, a, a pastor a tag along day where I go and watch you work, but I know at work. You're probably you're calling x-rays out, telling people what position to get in, you know, you put them on tape. I've been there before. But in the back of your mind and at the forefront of your heart, you're looking for a door to open. That they'll say something that will open the door that you can preach Christ. That you can preach the gospel, whether it be with co-workers or a patient. I know our world tries to limit us and choke us down so we can't. It's not politically correct to tell people about Jesus. Oh, my friends, do you understand if we abandon the work, we abandon the right way? We abandon being the lighthouse that we need to be for Christ? He said, I'm doing a great work. I can't stop shining my light. My dad was a Navy guy, and my dad loved lighthouses. He really did, and he loved the East Coast, Cape Hatteras, and all that stuff down there. And one of the things my dad liked is lighthouses, and he told me some stories about how those lighthouses uh, would work and how they would draw ships in. And down in Cape Hatteras, it's kind of like Pirate Cove or something. I don't know. But he said back in the, uh, I don't know, 1600s, 1700s, one of the things that pirates would do is they would take a, a mule and they would tie a lantern around its neck and they would put some hay down or feed and that, that mule would bob up and down eating that hay. Ships out in the ocean would see that and think that's, that's another ship bobbing up and down in the water. See the light going up and down? And they would come in and what they would do is they would crash them on the rocks. Satan's trying to do the same thing to you and I. He's trying to do the same thing to this world. That's why we need to be a steady light, to stay on the wall. <coughs> you see, it seems that Nehemiah's manner of life was this, to give himself 100% to his work so he wouldn't step down from what he was doing. He wasn't going to turn his back on what God had given him to do. Let me ask you a question tonight. What has God given you to do? I know... I've been at Faith Baptist Church seven years now. I am not as far along as I wanted to be. In my mind, I thought, hey, when I get there, I'm going to turn the world upside down for Jesus. I'm going to knock on every door. I'm going to just tackle the whole thing, and I'll fill that church up. I'll, I'll. You know what I found out about I'll? I don't do anything. That's right. Let's the Lord build the house. They labor in vain. Amen. God's got to do the work. God has to do the same. It doesn't excuse us from being a witness. Just as well as it didn't excuse Nehemiah from being a worker. You see, when we step aside from the work that God's given us, we take an unrighteous step into ungodliness. And we take others with us. Do you know there are people that watch you where you bank, you work, you play? They're watching you. They know. 
They know. They know you're a Christian. They're counting on you. I can't tell you the times where people have been just raunchy, co-workers, and then come up to you later on and say, will you pray for me? Can you tell me how to be saved? I can't, tell you, can't count the times that people have, have turned in that moment of, of brokenness and know they need the Lord. Listen, be that light. Stay on the wall as Nehemiah did. Because if you don't stay on the wall, you, you do abandon God's ways. Turn with me, if you will, to Proverbs chapter 4. Now, Danny said I had two hours to preach. So I'm trying to keep it uh, two hours. I'm just kidding. I'm almost done. Proverbs 4, verse 23. And Proverbs 4, verse 23, it says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth. And perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on. And let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet. And let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. You notice what the old preacher said there? He said, don't turn to the right. Don't turn to the left. Stay the course. Stay on the wall. He said, well, I'm just doing this little bit, though. You can keep doing that little bit. Our children look to us. Our grandchildren look to us. My daughter, my oldest daughter, she's out of church and she came up to me a couple weeks back and I was getting ready to go out of town. And I work full time, so when I study, I like to be awake. So I got up early in the morning, took the day off, studied all day, studied the next day. She said, Dad, you've been studying for two days. When's it going to be enough? I don't know. Whenever God says, give me a little period, I can stop and I'll quit. They're watching us. Amen. You see, when things fall apart, they're not going to run to the advice of this world. They're going to come to the right way. That's what I did. You see, I was trying to do things my own way. As a young man, I had a plan. I had me a pretty cool car, pretty girlfriend. Man, she was pretty. Still is. I married her. That was a good thing. Had a little bit of money in the bank. But you know what? The advice of this world was taking me nowhere. Came to a place when that all fell apart and I realized I'm an empty man in a hollow world that needs help. Abba Father, Jesus, save me from my sins. You see, if you step down now and you turn to the left or you turn to the right and you remove your foot from the good things, you have placed your foot in the evil way. There's, no, there's nowhere for you to go, Christian. For us to step down is, is major compromise. We need to hold on to what's right. Keep the tools in our hand. You say, what is the tool? It's thus saith the Lord, the Word of God. Keep it in your hands. Thirdly tonight, and I'm wrapping up with this, we abandon our witness. The second part of verse 3, he said, why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? We abandon that witness. You see, Nehemiah held a place of great authority. You might have a great position where you work. And if you hold that position, you hold it well, you'll, you'll have great respect. My son and I were working, and we were doing a particular project, and um, one of the people that worked there, I was doing something a little different to make it a little better, what we were doing, and he said, you don't have to go through all that trouble. I said, yes, I do. He said, that's overkill. I said, my name's in the line. He looked at my son. He said, your dad's name is perfectly safe. To God be the glory. I, I'm not trying to preach on me tonight. I'm just saying that when we do things God's way, he gets, he gets the witness. When we do things God's way, as Nehemiah stood there on this wall and he would not come down from this work, no matter the smear campaign they launched to get him, he stayed there in great authority. He, he remained in a state of respect. He said, I can't come down. Why? Number one, all Jerusalem was watching him. All Jerusalem was watching Nehemiah lead. And you may not think you're the leader in your family, but if you're following the Lord wholeheartedly, you're a leader in your family. Amen. You see, the people of, of, of Jerusalem were keeping their eyes on him. All of Jerusalem was keeping their eyes on him. And he was the leader. And the people watched him as, as he played out the role of a, a godly leader. 
if he would have got down off that wall and he went down there with sand ballot and toe bias, you know, you're right, there's an easier way. He would have compromised. And for that, his testimony would have been ruined. His witness would have been ruined. And the New York Times, I mean, those guys would have published reports that see, he's just like everybody else. And that's what the world wants to say. We're no different than them. I got news for you. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Paul said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We're new in Christ. We're not always perfect. We mess up a lot. Don't we mess up? I do. You may not be a mess up. I mess up a lot. But praise God, we have an advocate with the Father. Amen. Praise God, we have a, a faithful God. He said he's faithful and just to forgive us of all sin and unrighteousness. I'm so glad that he said all. I'm glad. He, well, yeah, that was a little bit over the top. That's what's got some religions in trouble. They lose their salvation, but you can't do that. But you know what I'm saying. Well, we, if we step down from the work, if Nehemiah would have stepped down from the work, you know what the next thing would have been to happen? Somebody else would have stepped down right behind him. And if somebody else would have stepped down behind him, it would have been a domino effect. You know those gates would have never got mounted on those walls. The people of Jerusalem would have never uh, re, uh, re, 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 re constituted back to that place. They would have never came back together again. Do you have a loved one you want to come home to get things right? Listen, if you get off the wall now, you won't see them come home. I've seen women wait 30 years plus and finally see their husbands come home to be saved and, and know the Lord. I think that's just awesome, fantastic. Amen. Don't you? <coughs> I think that's wonderful. Well, not only people in Jerusalem would have frowned at it, but the people outside of Jerusalem would have looked at it. The credibility of Nehemiah and his followers would have been lost. You know, once your credibility is gone, people don't trust you. They just don't. So what can we do? We can get our trials and our tools and get back to work. Say, Lord, what do you want me to do next? I think when we seek God's will for what he wants us to do next. I hear a lot of Christians say, um, I'm on an adventure for God. It is an adventure for God when you're following him. It really is, because you don't know what God will do with you next. You don't know what he will do with you next. And I've heard and seen of great stories of, of people who thought, my life is all but over. And be in their latter years, and God use them in a mighty and powerful. One lady I know of, uh, just because she wore a brooch that had little diamonds and Belt and sparkle Jesus, a man that got him thinking about the Lord from a brooch. Now, she wasn't out there with tracks. She did have tracks, but she wasn't preaching fire and brimstone. But that little pin on the bus stop every morning, she had a little bag get on the bus. And that guy one day stopped her talk to her and said, you know, that made me get dig my Bible out. For just the smallest thing we can faithfully do for the Lord can have the greatest impact on our society. Amen. You look at our society right now and just... Uh, before I got here, I was talking to someone who is dealing with uh, the drug epidemic and all that, and how many people are affected by heroin. You know how that happens, by the way? Somebody passes it along, gets somebody addicted, then they're addicted, and it just goes and goes and goes. Friend, as Christians, we need to stay on the wall. We need to recruit others, preach Christ to others. But we also, in the end, we we get down from this wall we abandon the weary Jesus said come unto me all you that are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest friend if we get down off the wall think of all the weary souls that are out there I see them I do I hurt for them I wish I could do more for them I can do the greatest thing for them by staying on the wall and preaching Christ you can do the same thing by staying on the wall one of the things that you and I should see tonight is this is that as Nehemiah stayed on the wall you and I need to stay on the wall they published bad report. Bad things may be said about you. But you know what? You can be like Nehemiah, who stayed the course. You see what Nehemiah had in his his foresight or his uh his vision was this is to see God's people redeemed, brought back to that place. 
where he could hear the praises of God being sung and, and, and hung throughout the place, throughout Jerusalem. To see the faithful, they're back at work. I wonder how it would be if, and I, this is one of my desires, is that some of the older members of my church could see her. I just wanted to see a revival break out so the older ones could say, hey, we've seen it. Amen. It's here. Praise God, it's here. Well, guess what? That can come if you and I will stay on the wall. Let me ask you tonight, have you put down your uh, tools tonight? Have you kind of lost a little hope? Maybe things seem a little hopeless in where you're at, what you're doing, kind of giving up on the inside. Maybe you're not telling anybody. Maybe you're not admitting it to anybody, but you've lost hope. What do I do now, Lord? What do I do now? I've lost a little hope. Friend, I'm here to tell you that reading on through Nehemiah, he finished the wall in 52 days and the half thereof and got the gates up and he glorified God. The people came together. But you know what? There was a battle not long after that. And there has been a battle ever since. So we live in a cyclical cycle. Battle, victory, battle, victory, battle, victory. But if we stay on the wall, we stay at the task, guess what? We can teach those who are coming behind us what it really means. To stay on the wall. Amen. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Amen. If you'd all stand and turn to number one hundred six.